All right, guys, what is up? Let's talk about one thing that I would never go without in reef keeping, a sump. A sump is basically a secondary tank that your main display tank drains down into. Why do I love these things so much? Let's go through some of the advantages. First off, a sump is a great place to relocate all of your equipment. In systems that are just standalone tanks, the more technology that's added can start to clutter things up. Most reef keepers I know like to tinker a bit and try out new technology. So what starts as an elegant system gets more and more cluttered over time. A sump gets that clutter out of the main display tank. The second big benefit to a sump is the surface skimming that an overflow provides. A big problem with tanks without an overflow is that scum tends to collect on the top surface. When the water in the main display drains down into a sump, the surface is cleared up nicely. Since I brought up draining, I should probably talk a little bit about how sumps work. The draining part is passive. It's not like there's one pump taking water out of the display and another pump in the sump putting it back. The reason for this is because there's no way to adjust both pumps to remove and return exactly the same amount of water. And over time, one of these two tanks will overflow. Just for the sake of argument, what if you get two of the exact same pump? It still won't work. Pump power varies just a little bit from pump to pump. And then there's the different head pressures by putting on plumbing. And then if something like algae starts to grow more in one than the other, basically the list of potential problems goes on and on. So in short, there's only one pump and it sends water into the main tank and then that water passively overflows back down into the sump. When designing a sump system, make sure that your drainage capacity is not exceeded by the return capacity of the pump. In all the systems I have here at Tidal Gardens, I go overboard on the drains. I want to basically avoid overflows of the main display tanks at all costs, and that includes random stuff, like a snail going down into an overflow and blocking it. So the drain lines here range from one and a half to two inches in diameter just in case. The third advantage to having a sump is that it provides additional water volume. Water volume is nice because it makes the overall system more consistent in terms of both temperature and water chemistry, because changes happen a lot more slowly in larger volumes of water. I believe in that saying that like nothing good happens quickly in a reef aquarium, and having that extra water is like a buffer for a disaster. The fourth advantage is flexibility. You can set up a sump in many different ways. Let's take a look at a high-end sump that my friend Will is going to use for his new setup. It's certainly easier to explain all the different components when the sump is brand new. This sump can be described as four different sections. A main filter compartment for a protein skimmer, a refugium, a media compartment, and finally a filter stage right before the return pump. The water first enters the sump through these two pipes, one located right by the protein skimmer and another by the opposite corner where the return pump will be situated. Now I don't quite recall if the second drain line is an emergency or not, but it is right there. Here you can see the compartment that holds the protein skimmer. When planning a spot for a protein skimmer, one thing to keep in mind is you want to keep the water level consistent in that section. If the water raises or lowers, that really affects the skimmer's performance. You can see here that there's a baffle that keeps the water at a consistent level. Once the water pours over that baffle, it goes through a sponge. Now this is helpful in keeping micro bubbles in check more so than catching particulate waste. Regardless, it's good practice to rinse these out regularly. The next stage is the media compartment. The three media canisters are fed directly off of the return pump at the end of the chain. Um, typically, aquarists will use some combination of activated carbon or GFO for phosphate removal, something of the sort. I think Will intends to have a zeovit reactor in this compartment. And also you can see here that there's six threaded holes. Those can be used for external reactor hookups, like for example, calcium reactors or calcwasser reactors or they can just be plugged when not in use. 
Once water flows out of the media compartment, it cascades over another baffle and sponge and onto the return pump. Will has a blue line here. Um, my personal favorite is a Japanese made Iwaki pump. They're not energy efficient, but they are workhorse pumps that last forever and practically ignore head pressure. So that's my number one choice. Okay, so that return pump then sends water back to the display tank, but also sends water to the media canisters and finally this refugium on the very other end of the sump. You can see the input for the refugium here, which is a spray bar. There's also an emergency overflow on the opposite end, just in case that the main drain fails. For those unfamiliar with refugiums, they're areas where microfauna and decorative macroalgae can proliferate without predation. All sorts of tiny inverts grow and eventually make it back into the main aquarium, which can serve as a continuous food source. This particular sump design actually routes the water leaving the refugium past the protein skimmer stage and onto the filter media stage. The concern there is that the protein skimmer might skim out some of those critters. Lastly, while not a part of the sump per se, there are large water mixing stations that will provide fresh water for top off and a continuous water change system using dosing pumps. As I mentioned, the thing about sumps is that they provide a lot of flexibility and you can make them as simple or as complicated as you like. There's plenty of people that use regular glass aquariums as sumps. Also, don't feel that you have to plan out every detail as if it was like a bespoke suit or something. One idea that I got from Miss Saltwater Tank's sump is to have one compartment completely empty because it's hard to anticipate what you might need in the future. In her setup, that blank space was used as a hospital tank for corals, a nursery for breeding fish, and who knows what else. Anyhow, that pretty much does it for sumps. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas for your own setup. Now if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about sumps, post them in the comments below. Now I don't have all the answers, but the internet's a pretty big place, and I'm sure some other TG viewers have some ideas that might help you out. Until next time, happy reefing.